of uh, new controls like the wizard control. I'll be covering field validators and also the SMTP component for sending a piece of email. So we'll combine these various techniques to build a simple web page that you can add to your site to collect some kind of feedback from your users. So we'll start by creating a new website. I'll call it feedback. Now we'll do most of our work in design mode where I'm going to start by dropping in this new component called the wizard. To make it look a little nicer, let me turn on auto formatting. I'll choose colorful. And I'll need a little bit more room than this, so I'll stretch it out. Now unfortunately when I stretch it out, there's way too much space here for the left side. So I can modify the properties right here. And you can see that this component is divided into two parts. The left side is the list of steps that the wizard will go through, and the right side is where you put the, uh, the text boxes and the things where you get the feedback from the user. And at the bottom, it manages the next and previous buttons for you. So what I'd like to do first is take that sidebar style and change the width to something a little bit smaller. I'll change it to 150 pixels should do. And finally, the step style, which is the area over here, I happen to know that to make this look good we want to change the vertical alignment to the top. Okay, now I have a space to play in. Let's first add the four steps to our dialog. So if I go into add remove wizard steps, you can see I have two we have two for us already. Let me remove these and I'll start I'll just add our four. So the first step we'll call um, we'll collect the name and email. So this will be our contact info that we'll get from our user. The next step will be the comments. The third step will be a summary of what we're going to submit to the website. Now, because this is the pretty much the final step before something happens, I'll change this to finish. So this will give us a finish button on the page. And then this final one here is the step that you'll see when the entire process is complete. So that'll be a page where we'll link someplace else. Okay, so now we have the basic layout of our site. Let's, um, you can see as I click here, it, the buttons change to show you what the user is going to see next and previous. Here we have the finish button. So on the first page, let's just collect the name and email. And I'll do that um, to help us with the layout. Let me insert a table that is, I think three rows is fine and three columns. Actually, that's, that's just right. I'll put a little padding in here. So we'll have the first name here. Actually, I'll just call, I'll say your name, email, and I'll use this area here for, for something else in just a second. So for the name and email address, we'll use a text box for both of these. And I'll give it something meaningful, text, name. And we need another text box for the email. Now what I'm going to do with this third column right here, that's where I'll put the field validation controls. So down here in a separate area under validation, we have several different components that we can drag on to constrain our, our form or dialog to only accept a certain kind of input. Now for email, it's going to be, I'm sorry, for your name, it's going to be pretty easy. We just want that to be, uh, we'll use the required field validator. That means you have to enter something there. And I need to, for all these controls, you'll see you need to associate it with a control to validate. And here we have two controls, email and name. So I'll choose name. And this is a neat trick. If I change the, um, first of all, the error message to um, please enter your name. Now that's kind of a lot of text to display right here. What you can do is simply use the, uh, put an asterisk where it says text and that will be shown if the user did not enter the correct information. And this error message will be displayed right here where we have the validation summary. So if I drop the validation summary here, and let me merge these two cells to give it a little bit more room. So if there's a problem with the site, if there's a problem with the form, all the error messages will be collected in one space right here. And you'll see that comes in handy because for the email, we're going to use two validation controls. First, we'll use the required field validator, just like the other one. Not exactly friendly messages, but it gets the point across. And I'll put the little star. And we need one more. The, we're going to use the regular expression validator. 
and if we look down here under the validation expression we have an ellipsis we have some built-in regular expressions here that represent valid um, valid inputs we'll choose internet mail email address set it up to the control to validate which is email and error message will say enter a valid email address and change the text now I forgot to associate this control, so let me just do that. Email. Okay, this should be good. So we have three validation controls on two inputs, and we're using the validation summary. Let's, let's test this control. So right off the bat, before we do anything, let's see what happens if we just try to go to the next page. Good, so we have to have a name and an email address. So once I start typing something here and tab away, watch, that star goes away. That's because there's some client-side validation going on at the same time. If I go next, you see that one error message goes away. So now I can type something in for email, but it's more than just required. It has to be in a specific format. So I'll try the foo at bar.com. Perfect. So now we move on to the second step. 